Problem 30. So a 1,300 kilogram roller coaster starts at rest on the top of a 60 meter hill. Track goes down to ground level before going up to a second hill with a height of 35. There is no friction. A, draw a picture. B, how fast is it traveling at the bottom of the hill? C, how fast is it traveling at the top of the second hill? So for starters, we're going to draw a diagram here. So the way we've drawn these diagrams in the past is you draw the object and the thing. Okay, so the object and the thing is a roller coaster hill. The first hill is 60 meters above the ground. And I drew horrible ground, but whatever. Okay, the second is 35 meters above the ground. And apparently mine goes under the ground, but pretend like that doesn't happen. Okay. Then we need to decide where our starting and ending points are for each part of the problem. We'll get there here momentarily. Um, but the next thing that we need to do once we figure this out is we need to figure out where zero is. We need to figure out what our zero point is. And I'm going to go ahead and make our zero point the ground because I think that's going to be the simplest for most people. That's not necessarily the easiest always, but it's usually going to be the simplest to call the ground zero. You certainly don't have to. You can call any point you want zero. There are three points that make sense to call zero. The top, the bottom, um, and then the end. Those are the three points that make the most sense. The lowest point on the ground, the highest point, um, because the lowest point is usually the ground, um, but the highest point, the ground, and then the ending point. Those are the places that make the most sense um, to pick. So I pick the ground. So there's my picture. It's set up. It's ready to go. So now we're ready for B. How fast is the coaster going at the bottom of the first hill? And then C, how fast is it going at the top of the second hill? So let's do B here. And then I'll do C over here. Okay. So, I need to decide what type of problem this is. Well, let's do knowns and unknowns first. So, first of all, we have the object with a mass of 1,300 kilograms. Okay. We know that it starts at rest, so the initial velocity is zero. We know it starts at the top of a 60 meter hill, and since I called the ground zero, it is 60 meters above that, so HI is 60 meters. Okay, so B wants to know what's going on at the bottom of the hill. So that means for B, H final is zero because it ends on the ground. And V final is what I'm solving for. C wants to know when you get to, so this is B down here. Here's C at the top. C wants to know what's at the top of the second hill. So H final for C is 35 meters above the ground, 35 meters above zero, and V final is what I'm solving for. Okay? So I'm going to leave you to go and try to solve it. I will give you um, three, two hints. I'll give you two hints here. So hint number one is this is talking about energy changing. It's talking about starting at a point, ending at another point, moving between those points. That's what energy is. And so the energy uh, conservation equation is Ke. I wrote them as Kea, but I'm using I and F here, but it's the same idea. Kei plus Pei equals Kef plus Pef. So that's the equation. That's how you're going to solve this. Remember, you need to find Ke and Pe. And the way you do that, Ke is 1 half mv squared. 
And again, I'm just getting these from the equations. PE is MGH. All right, go ahead and see if you can solve B and C. Let's continue where we picked off, um, or we picked left off, whatever. You get words. So we need to find these things, KEI, PEI, KEF, PEF. So let's start with the KEIs and the PEIs. And the reason we're going to do those first is because those are going to be the same for B and C. Okay? So KEI, I'm going to do them down here. So kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. Okay? So 1 half times mass, which is 1300 times velocity squared. The velocity at the beginning, so this is my initial, this is I, okay, is zero. And yes, you can get a value of zero. Totally fine, not a problem, absolutely works. Totally fine. So that's KEI. Then we need to find PEI. I'll zoom in here a little bit since I'm writing kind of small. So PE is MGH. So PEI will be M. G, now some of you look like forgot what G was. G is 9.8. Um, let me see, I think it's on, I don't know if it's on the equation sheet anywhere. No, it doesn't look like it. Um, G is just something that you need to know. We've used it a whole bunch. Um, G is 9.8. It's the value for acceleration of gravity. And then times H. And H is 60 for the initial? No, that's a good question. So the reason it's not negative 9.8 is because negative is a direction and G doesn't have a direction for these problems. It's just a value. Okay, so 1300 times 9.8 times 60 is a large number. 76, 764,400. Okay, I found my initial values now. So now I need to find my final values for B. So I'm just doing KEF, PEF now. So 1 F MV squared, MGH. I'm just doing that like I did before. But now I need to use the final numbers. So KE final for part B is one half M V squared. So one half M V squared. I don't know what V is, so I just write V. And that's 650 V squared. Then I do MGH. So the mass is 1300, G is still 9.8, H is going to be 0, so it's just 0.
So, now I'm ready to put everything together. So, KEI plus PEI equals KEF plus PEF. So, KEI is 0 plus PEI 76, uh, 764,400 equals KEF, so 650 V squared. plus PEF zero. There we go, sorry. All that's left, divide 650 to both sides and then square root to get V by itself. I'm a little out of space here, so 764,400 divided by 650, square root that number, you get 34.3. Thirty-four point three meters per second. So now we're ready to do C, and C is going to work out the exact same way. But we need to find the new values for KEF and PEF. So KEF is one half times mass times velocity squared. I don't know what V is, so I just wrote V squared. PEF is MGH M G H. This time the H isn't zero, it's thirty five. Okay, so that value thirteen hundred times nine point eight times thirty five four hundred and forty five thousand nine hundred. Okay, now we put it all together. Same equation, KEI plus PEI equals KEF plus PEF. So KEI was 0 plus PEI 764,400 equals KEF, so 650 V squared. plus PEF 445,900. Okay, this time we need to subtract this number over first, then we'll divide by 650, and then we'll square root. And this time you get 22.1 meters per second. 